Wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. Why is it that the truth tellers are always put out to be the bad person? Why is the one that's always delivering the truth? People try to turn them out to be the bad person. Miss Celestial, back with another prophecy. I believe in her. You should too, man. Check this out. The prophecy that I have was given to me by the Lord yesterday, August the 29th, 2024. I really wish that I could have brought this prophecy on the same day that I received it, but it was a very weighty one, and there were aspects of it that I really needed to press back in prayer to the Lord for greater understanding. And for most of the evening last night when I was spending time with God, he had me in Jeremiah 23. If you are living in the United States of America or if you are living in other nations that are are experiencing a rise a surge in fact i would just call it an overflow of wrong doctrinal teaching of the rise of false prophets of people who simply come online and style themselves as spiritual leaders then it is very necessary for you to look at two passages of scripture that i've been covering here for the entire five-year period that i've been here one is jeremiah 23 and one is ezekiel 13. the reason that it's necessary for you to look at at those two different passages of scripture is because the Lord Jesus Christ is very particular about who he actually selects to be a leader, to be a teacher, to be a prophet, to be a pastor, an evangelist, or an apostle in his house contrary to popular thoughts where people think that all you need is eloquence and all you need is to be able to stack Bible verses one upon another like a pearl necklace there is a there's a very important ingredient when it comes to actually being a leader in God's house, and it is that God must call you. You cannot call yourself to the spiritual ministry simply because spiritual ministry flows. If I have to explain it this way, spiritual ministry flows at the highest, highest, highest possible conceivable highway so we have we have highways whereby the highway runs along the ground and then we will have an overpass we'll have another one running on top and that way it's very efficient you can get two sets of cars running on basically the same piece of real estate the same expressway without causing an accident and that is how men do things. But then I just want you to think of an expressway that is so fast, so zippingly fast, and yet so high above that to be able to ascend to that high place, there's no earthly way for us in our earthly cars to ever be able to get onto such a high expressway and get up there and start driving among the fast, fast, fast cars, because that is the spiritual realm. Being used as a leader in God's house requires you to be invited by God to go and sit up at the high places. That means you can never take yourself there, even if you have the right clothing, even if you style yourselves. You know how a lot of pastors have these styled bios and it says, Mr. O'Henry so-and-so went to this Bible school. He felt called by God at age 15. And they write this very impressive bio which is not bad if the bio is true, if it's giving the spiritual leaders genuine, true journey of being called by God, then that bio is fine. If a man or a woman goes to seminary or whatever and begins to um, function in the body of Christ, if the biography is true, even if it's really short and simple like Smith Wigglesworth biography, he didn't go through all the fancy Bible schools like Oral Roberts and the rest, the man was not literate until he was in his 50s he learned to read when he started reading the bible god just helped him and his wife helped him and the first book that smith wigglesworth actually started learning how to read on as a man it, with five decades under his belt was the bible so he did not have a special biography so it's not necessary but you know when people write that biography the point of the biography is that if there's this important component of the biography does not contain was called by God, then the entire biography, no matter how it may be lyrical and flow, is a fraud because Jesus Christ is the one who calls the members into the body. He is the one who's, who gave gifts unto men. And then when you look at the gifts, it doesn't say Christmas gifts or that kind of gift or a cash gift. It's actually listing the fivefold ministers. And so fivefold ministers are not just random people that should pop up on the internet and start talking to you and say, but look at me, I've built a net worth and I've got this and a lot of people are doing this and everybody comes to my shows that's not what it is 
All this stuff is vapidness, it's vainness, and it's performance. A person can have a brick and mortar church and be called. A person can have a brick and mortar church and not be called. A person can have an online ministry with almost a million people following them and not be called. A person can have an online ministry with a million people following them and be called. So now we are in the era where God is going to bring about by his own power. No one else is going to do this. So there is no person under God's son who is going to call a showdown. Showdowns are called by the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit up to now I will let you know if you're an American that the Holy Spirit up to now has not been interested in calling a showdown. The reason for this is simple. God has not known that there was anybody else who was going to call a showdown and try to call him out and tell him things. The reason that I know that my ministry exists and the reason that God has sent me here is because he sent me here with a particular message for the United States. The message is twofold. It has a higher tier and it has a lower tier and a lot of people fight me in the balancing of the tiers because they feel that the higher tier should be you have done evil but i will still show you mercy because you are my beloved americans whom i love more than everyone else and then under that they want that to be the primary message and then they want the secondary message to be but anyway you've done some stuff and i don't like it but don't do it again Unfortunately, the message is two-tier and the message of repentance, this my shorter finger, is actually underneath. The longer finger that I'm showing you, sorry truckers, I know you can't see because you're listening by podcast, but God be with you. The longer finger is definitely, America, you have frustrated me to the end of my visible and a visible frustration as the Lord. I have judged you. That judgment is immovable. No one will shift the judgment of America, never, ever, ever, for as long as men shall live. I will judge you. I will destroy you. I will tear you down from your high place in the sight of all living. That means the people in the graves will not see it. But no matter where any man is, no matter where any woman or child is on this earth, including those of us who live here in the United States of America, when God brings America's judgment upon her, every eye will see and those who love her will mourn in accordance with the mourning of those who love mystery babylon that is in revelation 18. the shorter tier is of repentance but it is a very specific repentance it is not a call for national repentance and that is simple to understand if america as a nation could repent then there would be no need for the longer judgment the judgment of america is already set the judgment of america is already final nothing can ever 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 be done about it it doesn't matter if you're angry it doesn't matter if you're following your pastor who's saying that's rubbish god is a reckless god of love that person is lying to you that person is putting you in a severely compromised position where without a doubt if you don't come out of that compromised belief you are going to be hurt in the last days because if anyone ever wanted to see what the last days will be like just come to america and live here long enough you will get an up up close imax hd view to what total annihilation and destruction that will even end with creatures eating people is going to be like so if that is how you want to spend your sunset years get a visa, move here, and if you stay here long enough, you will see all that stuff happening. The repentance that God is offering America is not a national repentance. This is not a situation of Jonah went to Nineveh and he preached and the hearts of the people were seized with repentance. No, God is saying that the people in this nation, prior to receiving some of the shocks that the master's voice prophecy blog has brought them were completely turned away and departed from him as one man this means that if you can think of any pastor that you think oh he was a pastor a pastor you would be hard pressed to find a pastor who was still preaching the righteous true way of the lord jesus christ before God started sending hard impact prophecies through this ministry and other ministries where the ministers have already died. The ministers used to cry out stridently, but their voices were largely overpowered. The voices of the only two men that God sovereignly revealed to me were Dumitri Duduman and David Wilkerson. And both those men God has revealed died un 
happy in America. One brought forth a very massive prophecy that has depicted almost everything that America is rushing headlong into now. He brought that forth in 1983. Ten years later, in 1980, he brought that forth in 1973. This is Wilkerson. In 1983 or 1984, this is ten years later, God brought a Romanian here, a man who could not speak English, a man who up to his death never really mastered the English language. God brought that man here and that man brought a message that prior to him no one had ever clearly articulated like that before and that man's message for every single prophetic messenger has a call. His message was twofold. America is mystery Babylon of the scripture. Dimitri Dudeman was the first to say this, that America is mystery Babylon and America is going to suffer the total corruption followed by the total judgment, followed by the total sentencing, followed by the total annihilation that you can read in Revelation 18. Revelation 18 has America's complete future in it. It talks about how she fell and became corrupted. It talks about how the dangers of the corruption that she contained within her seeped out and made everybody corrupted across the earth. It talks about how God then pronounced judgment on her and said, mix her a cup and pour her double and let her drain it to the dregs. That is the cup of judgment that God says for this country that has always been hidden in history. She was going to drink two times the cup. This means two times the cup of Pompeii, two times the cup that they gave Atlantis, two times the cup of Rome. Any society, any civilization that has ever come to an abrupt end, a shocking, painful end, God says twice the judgment would come upon mystery Babylon. Pastor Dudeman came and that was his sole message. More than anything else that he spoke about, he said that America was mystery Babylon, that America was going to receive the full punishment and he had another peculiar twist. He said that America was going to be completely burnt up and beaten in warfare by the Russians. I had no idea that these two men had been saying any of those things. I was about at the 1.5 mark of my ministry and I clearly said the prophecy is called Kuiper Belt and Fire that I went out to do laundry at night and I was tired and I was sitting there and just watching the clothes spin spin in the washer I wasn't thinking anything and the Lord began to speak to me and tell me that you are not alone you are not alone in this burden you are not alone in this matter it doesn't matter how much they disbelieve you he said that i had messengers here i sent people here and sitting just in that partially empty laundromat because it was after 11 p.m that i was doing my laundry god began to tell me to look up this man called dimitri dudeman and when i looked up dimitri dudeman imagine my shock to see that this man came to this country and he labored here for years he was not a popular pastor so he was definitely not a big name pastor that people were flinging money at and saying we've got to get him over here the false prophet kim clement is the kind of person is the kind of teacher is a kind of leader that america adores because that person will play music in the background and will look so deep and will live in a place like california the home of the reprobate and apostate pastors and will see nothing but good for america will only peer into america's electoral future into america's yes there's some sin but god has this and god has that America loves to be told how her goodness cannot be corrupted by her badness. This is a lie from the deepest unexplored parts of hell that even Satan may not know that part is there. That is how deep that lie comes from. That lie is born from this reason that we have a Satan. We have a Satan because he came, became infected with the disease called pride. America has this fatal disease. This fatal disease has told America that her goodness can never be corrupted by her badness. I don't know if there has been a prophet in this land 
that has sat boldly on the internet to tell Americans that while they are shopping on Timu, making the Chinese rich, it's your money that those people are going to come here and control you with, by the way. You're building up the Chinese economies and what choice do people have? Everything is too expensive. But I don't know if there's a person who has sat boldly on this internet to tell you that thus saith the Lord, the leaders who have led you are sodomites. A sodomite is a man who sleeps with another man in his backside, committing the act of sodomy. If someone has homosexual tendencies but never acts on them, someone has homosexual tendencies but is struggling and striving against that in the church, you, my friend, are in the battle of your life, but you are not a sodomite. To be a sodomite, you have to commit sodomy by engaging in sexual relations with a man. I don't know if you've seen it, that someone has sat with their visible trackable face and told you that this is a nation run by sodomites filled with sodomites and god says that from the head on down the fish of the united states is rotten i clarified the difference and i said that even when reverend wilkerson was preaching whatever it is that god showed that man he could never bring himself to articulate it. He simply called it one forceful, angry word, filth. But the message and the, and the ministry that God has given me is that you will hear the detail of your sin. You will hear it whether you can swallow it or whether you are choking on it. And he says that is because he will not leave a single soul in this nation to have one accusation against him, such as to say, are you telling us that ever since Johnny Goss went missing, and even before that, when we started to have milk carton missing children and babies, are you telling us that these children were actually being fed into the sexual, human trafficking, satanic ritual machine and being eaten? Are you telling us that the men and women we look up to are actually part of various secret societies? Are you telling us that even our pastors participate in sodomite rituals? Are you telling us that we are being run by child eating pedophiles are you telling us this and the answer to all that is yes god has given me a ministry of detail this is why no matter what anyone says people still come back here to hear the details revelation 18 mystery babylon your cup of filth in your lifetime, the Lord has sent me, Celestial, to pour it out so that as you're looking at the crystal red drops fall, you can know that each one represented someone who perished, crying out, God said, that these children, they lose their lives and they end up crying, why, why? Even little ones are dying, he says. And their final thought and cry is of him and pitying themselves, thinking, why, why me? This ministry shall continue. No one is going to disrupt this ministry. No one is going to tear down this ministry. And the Lord has words. So let us look at the Lord's words and find out what the Lord has to say. We will open with the banner scripture. Please make sure that you would look in um, Jeremiah 23 and Ezekiel 13. It's very important because America is a land that is lost. When you, when you become corrupted, I've spoken of some of the corruption and said that when you get to the point where you have capricious people whose emotions are all over the place, like former President Donald Trump, and you've also had um, people who are sodomites like um, previous President Barack Obama and all those who were before him, and then you also come to the place where now you're about to be ruled by a woman where God says that when he's left you, when you fall into his disfavor, then you're going to have capricious people, children ruling you, and women. When you've come to that point and God is now even telling you that your religious ecclesia is corrupted, your religious ecclesia is actually sold out to darkness, moving among you with strange, sign, strange signs and wonders, then honestly, you have come to the end of your useful life. So this second tier of repentance, the first is an immovable judgment that shall never be removed. So if you cannot understand that, then you need to go back to the beginning of my blog and start listening through perhaps the Sin series. Also listen through the America series and that will tell you how angry God is with the things that have happened here. And there is no atonement for it. 
Not that the blood of Jesus cannot cover it. God has passed a judgment against a reprobate, apostate nation, which means he declines to wipe those things away. He will repay what happened to the American Indians. He will repay what happened to the African Americans. He will repay all the things that have happened to the children here. He will repay the people who are still at the bottom of lakes, their bones are still there, a little necklace around the neck, and a person has been missing that person for 60 to 70 years. He will repay all of it. He declines to void America's transactions. So the only thing that is left is repentance after Ezekiel 9. I have also been preaching that passage of scripture here for I don't know how long. Ezekiel 9 is personal repentance that God will vet as to whether it is righteous or not. Feeling sad is not repentance. Remorse, meaning I'm sorry for what I did. That's not repentance. Some of us have done things that are never going to be forgiven. I have been warning about that here. I've been speaking about that here. People obviously think that I must be a comedian because a lot of the things that I say here, the vast majority out there think that it is jest. They mock at it. They think it is funny. And they have no idea that every single syllable I've uttered here is the Lord's serious message that he is giving. God will vet whether the repentance is good enough or not. And then that group who have done things that God will never forgive, uttered especially out of their mouths. A lot of people have said things out of their mouths that have been absolutely blasphemous of the Holy Spirit. God is not going to allow those people to just flippantly and casually say, oh, you know, I wasn't sure. And I guess that's why I said those things. There's no way you can blaspheme the Holy Spirit and then think that you will get away with it just by saying, oh, I wasn't sure in any way. I didn't mean it and things like that. That's not how it works in spiritual circles. And that's why I said, when it comes to the high lane, when it comes to the high fast lane up there, we don't go up there because we want to go up there. Even Apostle John, Apostle John in the book of Revelation, he was the one who wrote all the revelation of Jesus Christ. And it's very clear that before John started writing those things that Jesus appeared to him and Jesus gave him a whole rundown of who he was so that John would know this is indeed your dear friend. You're not just looking at an apparition. You're not looking at Satan appearing as an angel of light. It is I, Jesus. Jesus gave him opening messages and opening um identifiers that let John know who this was and then Jesus was saying to him come up here come up here all through the thing Jesus was saying come up here come up here so John could know that the higher things he was entering into because Revelation is one of the most powerful books in the Bible he was being carried up there by the Spirit so if we now in these last days at the end of time are being guided by people who claim that they have the ability to enter up into the high fast lane but they're lying then people are in danger i'm not going to venture to, to say god's people are in danger because not everyone is god's a lot of people just claim the name of the lord but their inside is very dark their inside is very filled with i guess we could just say filled with a furnace that sets their tongues on fire by the fires of hell so people in general are in danger and then God's sheep for sure in particular are in danger if they are unable to distinguish between what is true and what is false and loud outbursts are not going to change that and saying I think this and I think that is not going to change that and we are in a generation that does not know how to keep its tongue. So all I can say um, is that a lot of people have already cursed themselves with many curses by the things that they have said and God's ears that are always listening have heard how much remonstration and how much rage that people have against him because a lot of people think that what they say and what they've been saying is against celestial but I am simply here on errand from the Lord and the outcome of it is basically what God always told me about you, America, which is that you would not suffer him to speak. You actually want to damn God to hell, that his mouth should close, his lying mouth, his witchcraft mouth, his divination mouth, the curses that you have uttered. I cannot even in good conscience say, may God have mercy on your soul, for you have blasphemed the utterance that comes through me by the Spirit. And all I can say is that 
you and the one that you were cursing are going to meet at the time appointed for you. The opening scripture, we will take it from Ezekiel chapter 2, and I'm going to read you the whole chapter, but I'll make it short so that you can understand. It's only 10 verses. And he said to me, Son of man, stand on your feet, and I will speak to you. Then the Spirit entered me when he spoke to me and set me on my feet. And I heard him who spoke to me. And he said to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their fathers have trans transgressed against me to this very day, for they are impudent and stubborn children. I am sending you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God. As for them, whether they hear or whether they refuse, for they are a rebellious house, yet they will know that a prophet has been among them. And you, son of man, do not be afraid of them, nor be afraid of their words. Though briars and thorns are with you, and you dwell among scorpions, do not be afraid of their words or dismayed by their looks, though they are a rebellious house. You shall speak my words to them, whether they hear or whether they refuse for they are rebellious. But you, son of man, hear what I say to you. Do not be rebellious like that rebellious house. Open your mouth and eat what I give you. <clears throat> Excuse me, please. Now when I looked, there was a hand stretched out to me, and behold, a scroll of a book was in it. Then he spread it before me, and there was writing. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, viewer. There's never been a more important time to get yourself together. I'm talking about spiritually, mentally, your health, your finances, getting yourself together completely here in 2024. And the year is almost over. There's going to be many things that come along the way in the next couple of years that's going to test your faith. Trials and tribulations. Things are going to start happening that never have happened before. Things are going to start happening that we've been warned about. Miss Celestial, the prophetess woman sent by God, I believe. The one that many people don't believe in. Because you know why? Satan doesn't want her to spread God's message. He don't want her to spread the warning and notify the people about what's really going on here in this land. Fuel. It's never been a more important time. It's never been a more important time to get your life together. Live righteous. Act on your morals. Spirituality. Getting closer to God. Today. Make today that time for you to get it right, to start over. Whatever it is you got to do to get right with the Lord, I suggest that you do that. Miss Celestial, back with another prophetic message, man. Thank y'all for tuning in. Be sure to like and share the video as well, and even drop down in the comments. Let me know your thoughts and opinions.